Hey, this is Aran Stern with a very exciting tutorial. Actually, this is again a two-part lesson, but a very unique one. I've received many emails that asks how I did the opening titles for the promo of my new DVD. Now, usually a magician can't reveal all its secrets, but in this case, I've decided to show you a few of mine. You just have to promise me to never show this to your clients unless you want them to pay you less money. Anyway, before I begin, I just want to note that in this two-part tutorial, I'll use some third-party plugins. In the first one, it will be 3D Stroke and Shine from Trap Code, and in the second part, I'll use Invigorator Pro from Zuckworks. Having said that, I think we are all ready to begin. We will start with the first stage, which is to build the background. So first we will create a new composition and I will rename this composition main titles background. I will choose my format, which is pile square pixels, and I will set the duration to 20 seconds. Then I will choose OK. And now let's create a new solid by choosing layer new solid and I will choose a dark gray for it. Say OK, say OK here, and now we are ready to set the first effect. And the effect that we will use in order to generate this lovely 3D stroke is, of course, trap code 3D stroke. So with this layer still selected, go under effect, and under trap code if you have it, and choose 3D stroke. So in order to generate something on the screen, first you have to draw your mask or your stroke. So let me just make sure that we will see the mask tools. I will choose the pen tool and I will draw my stroke and it will be something like this. And I'm using shift in order to get the constraint lines. And this is something similar to what I've done in the promo. So it should be something like this. This will be our first stroke. And as you can see, the 3D stroke effect will generate a stroke from it, which is very similar to the regular stroke effect that we have in After Effects. But this effect is much more sophisticated because, of course, you can manipulate it in 3D space. So let's choose the arrow for now. I will hide the mask contour so we will be able to see the stroke in all its glory. And first, let's change the color from it. I will select a nice blue color, something in this family and we will start to manipulate the properties. So I will take you through the steps that I use, but you can of course do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion of how to build a nice background from it. So we will start with the thickness. I will change it from 10 to four. So this will be a much thinner line. And now let's open the taper and enable it. This feature, of course, will enable the taper on both sides of your path. Now you can collapse it at this point and let's go to the repeater now and let's enable the repeater. And this will add an instances for your line. And because the number here is two, we are getting two instances before our line and two instances after our line. In my case, I will change it from two to 20 and we will also change the opacity for them. We will lower it to 65. So you can see that at the middle, it will be much more solid. At the beginning and the end, it will decay until 65%. Now I want to animate the scale properties of the repeater. So at the first frame, I will reduce it to one. Then I will record a keyframe because I want it to just start very, very fast. So let's just move forward to one second and we will change it dramatically to say 130. So this is basically what we have here. So it's just a quick animation. And let's stand here for a moment because we want to change few more setting here in the repeater. First, we will change the X rotation. Instead of zero, I will type minus 100 degrees. And you can see that it swivel the X rotation of the repeaters only. Now we can change the Z rotation as well. Let's say 30 degrees in my case. Now you can close the repeater and let's come up to the transform. This will control the transform for the whole animation. And I really like the bend at the bend axis 
attributes. And we want to record an animation for the bend and the bend axis. So first let's change the bend axis to I say 150 degrees and then as soon as I will start to bend it you will see what happens on the screen. It's just bend into very nice organic shape. But instead of recording keyframes here we will use a quick expression. So hold down Alt or Option if you're working on a Mac and just click on the stopwatch of the band and let's type here time times 2 which means it will take the time control and just keep timing it into 2 so we've got at the end of it some very nice swirly animation and I really like this effect it's very very organic and it will suits our background very well okay let's stand here for a minute just to see exactly what we are doing and we will also set an animation for the Y rotation and for the Z rotation as well. You know what? The Z rotation can be something like 60 degrees. It will just flip it in a Z rotation, which again takes our stroke, our regular stroke. Remember, this is what we started with and just bend it and transform it. But we want to maybe change the Y rotation as we go along. So it looks like it is rotating in place. And again here I will use the same method which means I will enable an expression for the Y rotation and I will use the same parameters more or less let's say that here we will say time and we will time it by maybe 10. So now we've basically got some nice automatic animation that we will start for something like this and it will you know generate a sophisticated line that will bend itself. But if we will stand here for a moment, let's choose a maybe different place, something like here. Then we will see that we are bending it so much then it will come loose. So at some point of time, we'll see that our lines breaking up, which means it's divided into tiny circles and I want to fix it. So I will close the transform and we will drill down the advanced setting. And now you can set the adjust steps. The higher number means that it will break down sooner and the lower number meaning that we will basically sample it a little bit less. So if we will change it to say 20 then you will see that we've got a continuous line over here and it looks much better to my opinion. But since we are adding more and more lines, remember we are repeating this single line 20 times to each direction. We can hardly see the effect and I want to make it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. So in order to do so, we will change a couple of the advanced settings. First I will change the internal opacity from 100 to 10 and this will only allow 10% of each line to be visible so we can see how the lines is swiveling around themselves. So this looks very good. I will zoom out back again and I will also want to change the high alpha brightness to maybe 50. So it will bring more details back into our alpha. Now we are basically done with the 3D stroke properties. One thing to make sure is if you check the motion blur, just make sure it is set on comp settings because before we will render this, we want to make sure that its motion blur is set to on. and if we will enable the motion blur here in the main comp, it will take the motion blur of our comp and reapply it to our swiveling line. This is a good thing to know. For the moment, I will turn this one off because I want to bring back a few details that we lost when we lower the opacity. For this, I will use the popular shine effect. So under effect trap code, I will add the shine effect to this mix and let's change a couple of the parameters. I will start with the colorize and instead of based on lightness we will base it on our alpha channel because this is the channel that we manipulated. I also want to change the highlights, midtones and shadow colors. For the highlights I will select a bright blue. For the midtones I will select a middle blue, something like this. Maybe in this area and for the shadows of course we will select a darker tint something like this I think should work perfectly now we want to change the transfer mode from none to normal 
so it will add the shine effect on top of what we already have on top of our 3d stroke and maybe we will lower the source opacity to say 75 percent something like this also i think that we will change the ray length to five instead of four and i also like the volumetric lights of shine so i will drill down the shimmer effect and change the amount from zero to 100 and let's add a few more details by adding a higher number here to 25. So we're done with the 3D stroke and the shine effect, but I really want to take this stroke and make it look like a real 3D stroke, which means give it a little bit of bevel look or something like this. So let's just zoom in a little bit better in order to see it 100%. And in order to do so, I will go under layer and create a new adjustment layer and to this adjustment layer i will go under stylize and add the cc glass effect now let's open the surface and change the softness to a value of 7 the height to a value of 10 and the displacement to a value of i guess 20 or 25 we will see what works best and i think the 20 is a good number so as you see, take a look at the full screen, the addition of the CC glass effect on the adjustment layer really give this 3D stroke a beautifully and 3D look that I was after. Now let's come back to the full interface, re-enable the motion blur for the whole comp, and now I suggest you to render this one out as a QuickTime or AVI file because if you will use it in this stage, it will make our work in After Effects really sluggish and everything will be slowed down. So make sure the comp is selected, go under composition and make a movie out of it. You can choose whatever output model you like, but just make sure that after it will be done, import the file back into your comp. So now I will hit render and we will see what the outcome of the file will look like. After the render has been finished, you can double click it in order to check the result. And this is what we came up with the first part of our main titles background. So as you can see, the effects that we use, the 3D stroke and the shine, a company with the CC glass effect gives us a really nice background in order to place our titles on top of it. In part two, I will show you how to create a 3D titles using another third party plugins from Zuckworks in Vigorator Pro. And we will animate those 3D titles inside After Effects with the use of our main titles background as our background, of course. I hope you enjoyed this one. At the end of the lesson, there is another short version of the DVD promo. So I invite you to stay and take a look. And until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net saying goodbye.